Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and welcome to the Insider Exclusive. Today, we are featuring some breaking, headlined legal news on the Life After the Exoneration program. Stay tuned. My name is Jeffrey Scott Hornoff, and I'm a police officer. I was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Every step of the judicial system failed me and my family. And if not for the guilt and remorse of the true killer, I'd still be in prison. She died, I killed her. Why would you not want to ensure that California stops putting innocent people in prison? It's a very good question. I was locked up when I was 20 years old, just turned 20 years old. And I'm 42 now. So I've been in a little over 22 years. It was hard for my father to explain to me. I got convicted of raping somebody, but daddy didn't do it. So it was like, how you not do it, daddy? You've been in here for all these years now. Everything in your life is wonderful, and then one day, somebody comes up and tells a lie on you, and you end up in jail. What's different is he knows fear doesn't exist. When they told me rape, robbery, that's an instrument of crime, a gun, a conspiracy, all these, I'm like, oh my God, you know, this, this is almost like 100 years in jail for something you didn't do, and I'm, I'm really scared. I was in shock because I got found guilty. I looked him right in the face, and I said, you and I both know I didn't kill anyone. And he couldn't look me in the eye. He sentenced me to all that time, and I didn't know what to expect in prison. You know, I expected to uh, be beaten, be raped. I expected to die in prison. The government has failed the exonerated. It's finally over. It's been 19 years. What now? Go home. I am very pleased now to present the director of the Life After Exoneration program, Heather Weigand. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for coming down here today. I really appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about your program. What is the purpose of your organization, et cetera? What do you primarily do? Well, we were formed in 2003 to address the injustices of wrongful conviction by aiding and assisting exonerees and their family members to rebuild their life once they've gained their freedom and uh, found innocent and began to reintegrate into society. Why doesn't the government just double speed to take care of these people that have been through hell and back? Mm -hmm. well, what's, the, what's, what's the deal here? Well, there's 22 states in this country that do not have compensation laws. So if you're found innocent and uh, conviction is reversed and you're, you, know, you gain your freedom in one of these states, you are not eligible for any compensation. There are, however, the remaining states do have some kind of compensation statute, but very few of them have restorative awards, meaning social services. Two decades ago, we started to utilize DNA technology and getting innocent people out of prison. I mean, who would have thought it? Mm -hmm. So now, after um, over a decade of getting over um, nearly 400 people out, over 200 of those DNA exonerations, that means these are people that have been uh, have proven their innocence, uh, demonstrable innocence. Um, after we began to um, get uh, the Innocence Project and other attorneys gain uh, these people's freedom, they found that they weren't faring well. They had an extra layer of psychological issues. Mm -hmm. They had still the stigma of being in prison. They had problems getting their ex uh, record expunged. And they weren't getting compensated and, and uh, fighting an uphill legal battle just to get compensated. So my question is, why? Why, is that, why aren't people coming forward like yourself, more yeah, people who yeah. are in a position to change things? I think what it is is really just uh, the public does not know and they're unaware of the systemic defect that's happening because what we have is prosecution, um, district attorneys saying that we have the greatest legal institution in the, in the world and that um, exoneration and innocent people going to prison is a rare phenomenon. Well, it's not rare. Right. We have over 500 uh, cases, two, over 200 of those DNA cases, which means they're slam dunk innocent cases. And this is now a systemic defect. It's not a rare occasion anymore. Mm -hmm. And any uh, prosecutor that would even say that has their head in the sand. Right. So people need to wake up. 
our system needs reform. And, you know, this is a, a country that incarcerates 2.2 million people. And within that population, you know, we, most of the population, the majority, are young, black, and male. And that's a whole generation being lost to institutional neglect and myopia. Right. And things need to change. And this movement that we talk about, bringing it to light and bringing criminal justice reform, is to talk about and bring it to the public because, number one, the public are jurors. So we need jurors to recognize the causes of wrongful conviction. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that a little later, I suppose. But they need to know what the causes are so they're not tripped up as a jury member and um, it, that they're, that they're open-minded and that they see um, possible um, uh, misleading cases and, and situations that happen during jury trial and appeal. Um, and the investigation process that make a case go wrong and end up with innocent people getting put in prison. Mm -hmm. And this is real and this is happening, and more often than, than not. Right now, I want to bring one of the exonerated yes. on, on our set. So we're going to go to that right now. That's right. Tim Atkins, yes. and he was incarcerated, what, for 20 24 years? 24 years. 24 years for years. a murder he didn't commit. That's right. Let's, let's bring him on right now. Okay. And my next guest, and I'm pleased to have him with us, Tim Atkins, thank you for joining us on the show. Mm -hmm. Your story is horrifying. Twenty-two and a half years for a conviction uh, crime you never did, right? Correct. What was it? You were convicted of what? Murder? First degree murder robbery. And where were you in California State Prison System? Yes. Twenty-two and a half years. What did it feel like when you wanted to tell the world that you were innocent, how, what kind of help did you have? I didn't have no help whatsoever, so I heard about the California Innocent Project through a friend while I was in prison, so I wrote him a letter. How many years had you been incarcerated before you were able to do that? About 18. 18 years? Did you ever think that you would never get out of prison? No, I never thought that. You know, I always told myself that I was going to keep fighting until I got out of prison. What happened? You contacted the California Innocence Project. What'd they do? Well, they investigated my claim and they found out that, you know, what I was saying was true. So they found all the witnesses and got them together and they recanted. So basically you were convicted on eyewitness testimony that was... Faulty. The eyewitness false. The, the, the person that uh, robbed and shot her husband was five foot four to five foot six. And I'd say you're about 60. pounds. And I was arrested seven days later. I was six feet tall, 178. I've interviewed a number of people that have been exonerees, and uh, a lot of them say uh, kind of the same thing. I don't hold any anger towards anyone because that would destroy me. Do you feel that same way? Yes, I, I live like that because to be angry and bitter, you know, it would stop my forward progress. Yes. So I can't do that. Yes. You know, it's a lot of things in life that happen that we don't understand, but we got to keep going. Now, in your current job, by helping at-risk young people, are they listening to you? Or is that, that must be fulfilling, isn't it? Yes, yeah, because it gave me a chance to share with the youngsters what nobody shared with me a long time ago. Which is what it's like. Exactly. What it's like running the streets and how, you, how it's so easy for you to get in trouble. And the hardest thing is for you to get out of trouble. Right. So, you know, I share my experience with them and try to help them any way I can. Well, thank you very much for being on the show, Tim. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. And thank you for coming down. Thank you. We're going to do another show on this. We're going to get right. the word out. I want to thank you very much for watching our show. You can catch more of these shows at www.insiderexclusive.com. Come back again.